Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to build an image gallery sample in Next.js using Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. My name is Sarah Maslin and I'm a developer at Oracle working on the Content Management headless samples. The Oracle Content Management documentation contains full information on the sample and cover what I'm going through in this demo in more detail. The sample is publicly available on GitHub and is already hooked up to Oracle Content Management. This code on GitHub is available for you to contribute to and give feedback on. So let's start by cloning this repository. You can use any editor or IDE of your choice. I prefer using Visual Studio Code. So I'll just pop over there and open up this sample. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is install the dependencies. So we'll open up a terminal and run npm install. While this is running, let's take a look at the project structure. Next.js lets you build server-side rendered or static site generated applications using React. This sample was created using Next.js's command line interface, which creates a project and sets everything up for you. This is all fully documented on the Next.js website. The components folder contains any reusable components, which simply render content all data is passed into these components and we'll go and look at these later. The pages folder contains the components associated with a root based on its name. Unlike other frameworks such as React and Vue, in Next.js there is no configuration file or component which specifies the roots and the components which render those roots. Next.js will assume any component in this folder is a root and we'll come back to those later. The public folder contains any public assets. The scripts folder contains all the code for getting data from Oracle Content Management to be rendered in this sample. The styles folder contains any style sheets used in the sample. There are a number of files at the root of this project which are worth noting. The env local configuration file contains a number of environment variables used in this sample. It contains the URL of the server and the token in the channel of which the assets have been published to. It's considered best practice to use an EMV file to contain sensitive data for your application and not to check it into source control. Therefore, when you use this sample for your own purposes, you most likely want to take this file out of your source control. The next config.js file is for custom advanced configuration of Next.js. I won't be going into this file in this sample, but take a look at the next do documentation for further information on this file. Finally, package.json is a typical Node.js file where it contains all the dependencies for this project, along with some of the scripts you're going to want to use to build and run this application. Now the dependencies have been installed, let's run the build by running npm run build. When the build completes, you can see that the output has determined all the URLs for every route in the application and pre-generated the pages. It did this by calling certain methods in each page component to get the data and the child routes. Build creates this .next directory containing the built application. So now let's run the application by running npm run start. And this will fire up a server, serving up all the content in that next directory. So let's open a browser and take a look at this sample. All the data for this sample is coming from Oracle Content Management. This home page demonstrates how taxonomies can be used to categorize content. A ta taxonomy is a hierarchical grouping of related concepts in Oracle Content Management. Taxonomies help content authors and content and client applications classify content into well-defined categories. 
Categories can be organized into hierarchies, but for this sample, we just want to show all available categories regardless of their organization. We query Oracle Content Management for all taxonomies and then the categories for each of them. Each category is then rendered with a preview of four images of the items inside the category, along with its name and the number of items in that category. When you click on a category, you're taken to the item grid page, and this shows all assets published in that category. If you click on a single item, you get a larger preview, and you can use the next and previous buttons to step through them. We also have this breadcrumb enabling you to go back up to the parent page. So let's go and actually look at the code that's producing this sample. Let's start with a scripts folder. This is where we have all the code related to getting data for Oracle Content Management. Oracle Content Management makes available a content SDK for anyone who wants to build a headless application in a framework such as Vue, Angular and React. Server Contig Utils um, is where we are creating the Oracle Content SDK. You can see at the top here we're importing the methods from the Content SDK. At the bottom of this file, we are creating the actual content client. We're using the values from the EMV file that we spoke about earlier. The rest of the code in this file is for when your sample is getting data from a secure channel or whose items have not yet been published. We do not cover this in this tutorial. The services file contains methods that encapsulate calls to the content SDK and return the results back to the React components to be rendered. It uses the client created in the server config utils. So if we take one, a look at one example, get home page data. First, it creates a client from using the content SDK. It then calls through to fetch all taxon taxonomy categories. And let's just take a quick look at that. You can see that we call content SDK to get all the taxonomies. Once we have those, we then loop over them and then fetch the categories for each of those taxonomies. And we return the list of all of those categories to the calling method. So here in Get Home page, we've got the list of all categories in all taxonomies. We then make another call to the server to add four item, get items for those categories, and I think we're only getting four. So when we return this data object, we have all the items in all the categories ready to display on that home page. There's a get item grid data function in here as well that gets all the data for that second page, which is listing all the items in that category. In short, this file contains all the content SDK calls the sample needs to render the data. The final file is utils, and this just contains a single utility function. Let's look at the reusable component. We've only got one in this sample, and this is rendering the gallery at the home page where it's got the four items, the category name, and the number of items in that category. And you can see that it just simply, ren is simply renders the markup for this component, and the data for this component is passed in. Let's look at the components for each route that's listed under pages. The home page is rendered by the index component and the image grid page is rendered by the category idjsx file, which means that the URL for the item image grid page will be slash category slash the ID of that category. And both of these routes you see at the top, we are defining the function and it takes in the data in which that component is going to render. And here is all the markup using that data. There is also these special functions, get static props and get static paths. The home page contains the implementation of get static props. And this is called during the build to get the data for the component. The data is returned from this method is what is passed into the component as properties. Looking at the image grid component, at the bottom you'll be able to see the same function. 
get static props and it's getting all the data to render all the items on that image grid page. The get static path function is also called during the build process and it's used by Next.js to determine all the possible routes for the image grid page. This function gets the list of categories and returns them so Next.js can build all the different URLs for the image grid page, for example, category slash one, category slash two, and so on. Under pages, there is one more file under API content. And this is when the sample is using content from a secure channel or assets which have not yet been published. And we are not covering that in this tutorial. So that's it for this sample. We have written a number of other sample tutorials in different frameworks, such as minimal site and blog written in Next.js, as well as a minimal site, image gallery and blog written in React, Vue and Angular. Please take a look at our documentation for all the samples that we have got. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful.